I really do appreciate uh, the perspective that you each bring from uh, your own experience. Um, it, with regard to the crack cocaine, the reference, uh, I was uh, a bit surprised when uh, Dan Lundgren, who had been a former Attorney General of California, before that had been in Congress here in the 80s, uh, when this issue came up, he pointed out that in the 80s, um, um, Congressman Charlie Rangel and, and others, member of the Congressional Black Caucus, had pointed out uh, basically that anyone that opposed having much tougher sentences for crack, which was an epidemic in uh, African American communities, would basically, in essence, be a racist. It meant you didn't care about getting to the heart of the crack cocaine problem in African American communities. And so what Dan had said, and we went back, found um, magazine articles, newspaper articles that backed that up, that uh, actually the Judiciary Committee here uh, went along with that position and, and agreed to tougher sentences for crack over powder cocaine at the urging of African Americans in Congress to try to deal with that. Well, it didn't work out so well in that regard. But Ms. Taylor, I, I noted in, in your testimony where you mentioned the um, fear and uh, the fear of parents, we, uh, among the parents we serve, the fear of fentanyl and it's equally deadly analogs as palpable. You said they are terrified that their child might be the next statistic, and that is very understandable in view of the, the uh, deaths that we've seen, and we see the numbers rising. Um, what I'm wondering is if we might uh, transfer that fear to those who are selling these drugs by virtue of the fact we make a stiff enough penalty if a death or serious bodily injury re results. They don't know whether they're selling something that's gonna end them up in prison for the rest of their lives because of death or serious bodily injury. Uh, it would seem like that might be a way of transferring the fear from the parents to the drug dealer if he or she doesn't actually know what they're selling. Do you think ignorance should be a defense uh, in those cases for drug dealers, Ms. Taylor? Well, no, I, but I would, what I really think is the heart of this legislation is the taking away the economic incentive for the chemists mm -hmm. to um, constantly innovate and change a molecule and violate the spirit of the law but not the letter of the law. Um, we've seen this in the steroid uh, world, we've seen this now in, in the opioid world, we'll continue to see it and just play a game of whack-a-mole. Um, and that's why I think it's important that we find a way, you know, the eight-factor analysis is, is the ideal, but we need to make sure that DEA is more nimble so that they can, when, when we detect that there's a problem with a, a substance, we can make sure that we bring it under the proper controls. And, and not necessarily as much for what's going on in the street as, as the, the import side of things when, well, when chemicals okay. are being imported. Thank you. And the time I have left, Ms. Pacheco, um, how do you feel about making a substantially uh, higher penalty for if a death or serious bodily injury were to result from the sale of a drug? Mr. Chair, members of the committee, you know, as a, as a prosecutor, I have seen so many, so many different situations. And in reference to your question, sir, if a person, for me it has to be, for, as a prosecutor, if a person knowingly does something to intentionally cause somebody's death or harm, there should be some type of consequence. The issue, though, if the individual does not know what's within the drug, what's contained within the drug, then how can you say that they knowingly should take responsibility for the results of their action? See, that's where it gets complicated. And 
you know, it, and... It sounds like you're saying it um, would be in the best interest of a drug dealer to just say, I don't want to know what's in this. That way I can't ever be punished if somebody dies from what I'm selling. Is that the result we're looking for? No, sir. And most drug dealers that I've encountered in my career have been your low level. From a professional standpoint. From a professional standpoint, of course. <laughs> Thank you for that yeah. clarification, sir. Yeah. Most of uh, the drug dealers that I've dealt with have been lower level. Uh, these are individuals who basically are selling to maintain their habits. It's because of their addiction. It's, the addiction drives them to continue maintaining their habits. So the best way they do it is they sell the drug so they get money so they can buy more drugs so they can continue their addiction. Because of the addiction, I mean, all they're trying to do is they're trying to survive at that level. They're not doing it for monetary purposes purposes, for the most part. They're just trying to maintain their addiction, and that's what makes it so difficult when we talk about drug reform, is that we need to look at it as a medical situation. They have a medical condition, and that's why the addiction is continuing. Thank you. Um, my time's expired, but uh, um, surely we can all agree, at least, that uh, if we can step up the, um, if not elimination, substantial reduction in the supply coming from China and Mexico, wouldn't we all be better off? I see from nodding heads, and I, I think we can. So hopefully, and, and that's one thing I think is grossly misunderstood about the President's proposal of a wall, if we can cut down the amount of poison drugs coming into the United States from or through Mexico, uh, that would seem to be the best thing a neighbor could ever do for Mexico. They got, they got hardworking people, they've got uh, natural resources, they ought to be one of the top 10 economies in the world, but they got more corruption than most places because of the drugs. Seems like it'd be a win for both nations if we can ever bring that to a crawl. But uh, we do appreciate so much each of your perspectives. If you should have any additional information you wanted the committee to consider um, uh, this subcommittee, because then it would go to the full committee, then please, uh, if you could get that to the committee here within the next 10 days, that would be immensely helpful. You each come from different backgrounds, and we appreciate having uh, the benefit of your, your own expertise.